What's up guys, this is John with TLD. Hope you guys are all doing well. I got a few requests to compare the brand new MacBook Airs with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Some people really aren't sure which is the better buy for them. So I'm gonna compare both the 11 and the 13 inch MacBook Airs to the MacBook Pro, run you guys through the pros and the cons of each. Uh, and hopefully uh, at the end of this video, let you guys know which is the better buy for you. So I'm gonna start out with the 11 inch MacBook Air, make this short and sweet and hopefully easy for you guys. If you're a college student or if you're a business person that travels a lot and you don't perform intensive tasks, this is the best bet for you guys. Now I say this because of the 11 inch form factor for students, it's small, it's lightweight, you can throw it in your backpack. And for the business person, because of the 11 inch size, you actually don't have to take it out of your bag during security checks. Now since you won't be performing heavy tasks, the two gigs of RAM will suit you just fine. It's actually gonna feel really fast because of the solid state memory. You get a nice high res display. The Nvidia GeForce 320 will actually allow you to play some games if you wanna download them from Steam or anything like that. Now if you want a more detailed look on the 11 inch MacBook Air, make sure to check out my full review. You guys can click that link here. Now jumping right into the 13 inch models, I try to configure these as close as possible to make this fair. So we'll start with the MacBook Air. For about 1400 bucks, you get an Intel 1.86 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM. Now for the hard drive, there's actually no hard drive in the MacBook Air. It's actually 128 gigs of solid state storage that's actually built onto the motherboard. So you're gonna get really quick access times and fast performance. We also get an NVIDIA GeForce 320M as well as a 1440 by 900 high res display which is actually the same as the base configuration for the 15 inch model. Now moving over to the MacBook Pro for about 200 bucks less at 11.99, we get a faster clock at 2.4 gigahertz compared to the 1.86. The same amount of memory, four gigs. Uh, now the hard drive, you get double the space, but it's gonna be a lot slower because this is a hard disk drive with moving parts. Uh, so the performance is gonna be nowhere near as good as the solid state storage. We get the same video card and then we also get a lower resolution display. Now looking at specs and the initial comparison between the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, it's really hard to decide which is the better buy. So we'll look at the pros and the cons of each. Starting with the MacBook Air, you get a higher screen resolution, you get solid state flash memory. For those of you new to this, uh, solid state storage, there's no moving parts compared to a hard disk drive. So you're going to get faster boot ups, faster performance, faster access times. Uh, and you also get six megs of cache. Now combine that with the solid state storage, that's going to fill really fast uh, for your system as a whole. Now with the MacBook Air compared to the MacBook Pro, you get a 30 day standby, which the MacBook Pro really can't touch. So if that matters to you, the MacBook Air kind of trounces it in that department. Now looking at the cons of the MacBook Air, however, there's no backlit keyboard. You don't get FireWire. There's no optical drive. You can buy an external one, uh, but to begin with, there's no optical drive on board. Now with the RAM, four gigs is the absolute max you can store on the MacBook Air compared to eight on the MacBook Pro. And you actually get a lower battery life at seven hours compared to 10 hours on the MacBook Pro. Now flipping sides to the MacBook Pro, the pluses to this is you get a FireWire 800 port plus an optical drive. You do get the backlit keyboard on this model. Now with this one, you can actually install up to eight gigs of RAM compared to four on the MacBook Air. And like I mentioned, the battery life is longer at 10 hours compared to seven on the MacBook Air. Now looking at the cons of the MacBook Pro, you get a lower cache. Uh, now you combine that with the hard disk drive and that's gonna feel slower compared to the MacBook Air even though the specs might be higher. You also get the lower screen resolution compared to the MacBook Air and like I mentioned, this can't touch the MacBook Air as far as standby. So if you put it in sleep, it's not gonna last 30 days. Uh, you might get lucky if it lasts a day or two. So we're gonna close this review out looking at Geekbench scores for the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Uh, so you guys can see both the 11 and 13 inch model for the MacBook Air aren't as fast on paper as the MacBook Pro. Now for rendering and heavier tasks, this is where the MacBook Pro is going to come in handy. So if you're doing some video editing, uh, maybe do some Photoshop work or music production, and you just want to get into Mac, uh, you need the FireWire port, this is a better buy for you. Now if you're not doing Photoshop, you're not doing editing, music production, or anything like that, the MacBook Air is the better buy for the everyday user. Even though the Geekbench score is lower, the overall fill will feel faster because of the solid state memory and the higher cache. Not to mention you get a higher screen resolution, plus aesthetically, I think the MacBook Air takes it in that category with the lightness plus the looks and the thinnest design of it. Uh, I like the MacBook Air for the everyday users. Now keep in mind on the MacBook Pro, you can get an SSD in there if you want. It's gonna cost you about 1600 bucks for that configuration. Um, so that's 200 bucks more than the MacBook Air configuration. And I just wanna kinda compare two similar setups and hopefully help you guys with your buying decisions. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hopefully it helped you guys out. As always, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.